Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's grade 6 practice problems review is on unit 5, lesson 4, adding and subtracting decimals with many non-zero digits. Question 1. For each subtraction problem, circle the correct calculation. In A, 7 and 2 tenths minus 3 and 67 hundredths. Well, you have to have the decimal points lined up. Here, it's not, so it's not going to be A. Here, it's certainly not, so it's not going to be the second one here. In our last one, we do have the decimal points lined up, and we used the zero here as the placeholder, which is great. They did some unbundling that you can't really see, but they do get the correct solution. So the third one is correct. 16 minus 1 and 4 tenths. Well, the decimal point for 16 is here, and so that's not right. Here, that's not right either. It's going to be the third one again as our decimal points are lined up and they used the placeholder with some unbundling slash borrowing um, to solve. So I'm supposed to circle the correct calculation, so circle and circle. In question two, explain how you could find the difference of one and 1,978 ten thousandths. Well, let's write down our one point, and I'm going to put a four zeros here because the other one has your eight four digits to the right of the decimal point. And we're going to subtract zero, the decimal point, the one, the nine, the seven, and the eight. And as you notice here, we have our decimal point that we can have lined up here. And so, let's go through and solve. Well, we're going to have to go all the way to the ones place in order to start unbundling some things. So, that one, we turn into ten tenths. We borrow from one of those tenths and turn those into ten hundredths. We borrow from a hundredth, turn it into ten thousandths, borrow from a thousandths and turn it into ten ten thousandths. And now we're set up to neatly subtract here. The ten minus eight is two. Nine minus seven is two. Nine minus nine is zero. Nine minus one is eight. Our decimal point we already lined up there. And zero minus zero, well that's just still zero. So our solution is eight thousand twenty two ten thousandths. A bag of chocolates is labeled to contain 384,000 pounds of chocolates. The actual weight of the chocolates is 3,798 ten thousandths of a pound. Whew. Are the chocolates heavier or lighter than the weight stated on the label? Well, let's see. Here, if we rewrite the weight of the chocolates, 3,798 ten thousandths. And we compare that to this 384 thousandths. This is really 3,840 ten thousandths. And so now if we just kind of visually compare 3,798 ten thousandths with 3,840 ten thousandths, you find that the 3,840 is the bigger number. So to answer the question, are the chocolates heavier or lighter than the weight stated on the label? Well, let's see. This was the actual. This was the label. So are the chocolates heavier or lighter than the weight on the label? They are. Wow, I cannot spell. That's a mistake. Let's try that one again. L-I-G-H-T-E-R. There we go. They're lighter. Really? Sorry about that. Then how much heavier or lighter are the chocolates uh, stated on the label? Show your reasoning. Well, let's subtract. Let's write our label number down here. And subtract the actual. And there is some unbundling that we're going to need to do here. We'll borrow from the thousandths place. It was 10, 10 thousandths. And so now we 10 minus 8 is 2. 
We're going to have to borrow here from the hundreds place, add 10 there. And so now we have 13 minus 9 is 4. 7 minus 7, 0. 3 minus 3, 0. Decimal point comes straight down in our 0. So we're at 42 tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths of a pound lighter. In question four, we need to complete the calculations so that each shows the correct sum. Well, if our sum's going to be four, what you really have down here are a bunch of zeros. And I would start with the right and go left. How do we get the six to be a zero? Well, we need to add four to it, which then that's the ten, carries a one. So now I'm at four. How do I get to that zero? I have to add six more, carry the one. How do I get there? 1 plus 9 gets us the 10. Carry another 1. I already have 2 there, so now I'm going to have 2.964. Kind of see how it's done there? Now, this is 1. Fun. Put these zeros in here. 8 plus what gets me to 0? 2 gets me, well, 8 plus 2 gets me to 10, right? So I can carry a 1, 1, and 3 already. I need 6 more to get to 10. 1 plus 7 is 8. I need 2 more to get to 10. Carry the 1. This is a 0 with the decimal point, so 262 thousandths. And something similar is taking place here in this last one. I just have to put my decimal points in. 7 plus what gets me to 10? 3. Carry the 1. 4 plus what gets me to 10? 6. Carry the 1. 2 plus what gets me to 10? 8. Carry the 1. 6 plus what gets me to 10? 4. Carry the 1. I just need a 0 there to finish. 400, or sorry, 4,863 ten thousandths. Question 5. A shipping container is loading cube-shaped crates into a larger cube-shaped container. Fun. I think. The smaller cubes have side lengths of 2.5 feet, and the larger shipping container has side lengths of 10 feet. How many crates will fit in the large shipping container? Explain your reasoning. Well, we can try to figure out if the shipping container has side lengths of 10 feet, how many of these smaller cubes can we get in there? Well, that asks us 10 divided by 2.5. And, and so that's 10 over 1 divided by 5 halves. Keep, change, flip, and you can cross simplify here. That's a 2 and a 1 after you divide both by 5, and you get 4 over 1, which is 4 containers. Now, if you have just this really basic cube here, that means you're getting 4 containers this way, 4 containers this way, 4 containers that way, and so our solution is going to be 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64 containers. And our last question, for every nine customers, the chef prepares two loaves of bread. Here is a double number line showing varying numbers of customers and the loaves prepared. A, complete the missing information. Looks like we're counting by nines on the number of customers, zero, nine, plus nine is 18, plus nine is 27, plus another nine is 36. On the bottom, it looks like we're counting by 2. 0 plus 2 is 2, plus 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. The same information is shown on the table. Complete the missing information. Well, the four loaves of bread were 18 people. 27 customers were six loaves of bread. 14 loaves. I don't see it. I don't see it. Uh-oh. We'll get there in a second. And one customer. I don't see it either. So how do we complete this table? What I would look at here is from the 2 to 14, I can multiply by 7. So that means 9 times 7 is going to be 63. And then likewise, if we're just looking for one customer, it's a little trickier. But basically, you're just dividing by 9. And so if I take this 2 and divide by 9, we get 2 ninths. So how many loaves are needed for 63 customers? 14. How many 
customers are there if the chef prepares 20 loaves? Well, we don't quite have that information, do we? But we could say, all right, nine customers, two loaves, to get to 20 loaves, we multiply by 10. So I can multiply the 9 by 10 to get 90 customers. And that answers this question. How much of a loaf is prepared for each customer? Well, that's that 2 ninths of a loaf. And that's it for this grade 6 practice problems review on Unit 5, Lesson 4, adding and subtracting decimals with many non-zero digits. Good luck.